Welcome to the Breakup Recovery Podcasts by your host, Barbara Stevens. Discover the wisdom and remarkable insights of Barbara Stevens, breakup recovery mentor, author, and public speaker. Barbara offers programs and solutions for any breakup so you can turn your life around, create lasting changes for the better, and embrace life again. Hello and welcome to Breakup Recovery Podcast. I'm Barbara Stevens and I'm a Breakup Recovery Mentor. And in this episode, I welcome back Otto Collins. So welcome back, Otto. Thanks, Barbara. It's great to be back on your podcast again. In today's episode, I'd like to focus more on the male perspective, like how men can get over breakups. So I know that in your line of work, both with you and Susie, you help a lot of people get through their breakups. Now, when it comes to a man, what would be the first tip you would give a male who is going through a breakup and is finding it difficult to cope? Well, the first tip I would give is that, you know, the, the first thing everybody wants to know is how long is it going to take for me to no longer feel this way? And there's no, you know, there's no one right answer to that question. And the first thing I would say is it's going to take however long it takes. And the answer that nobody wants to hear that I want to share is when things come up and they do come up and we men are really good at this, what I'm about to say, which is, you know, we want to pretend that everything's okay. We want to pretend that, you know, our world isn't falling apart. Sometimes, sometimes not. But you've got to really tune into, I'm in this place. I'm in this place of you know, whatever it is that you're feeling, I'm in this place of misery. I'm in this place of anger. I'm in this place of uncertainty. You know, you, you've got all these thoughts in your head. You know, you want her back. You don't want her back, you know. And, and you've got to really just know that whatever you're thinking, whatever you're feeling, You've got to make it okay, and you've just got to be with that in the moment instead of trying to make it go away. That's the probably the biggest tip I would give anybody is that you don't want to just push it away, push it away, whatever it is that you're feeling, because you want to just feel it and just stay with it. And that doesn't mean that, you know, you want to be tied, you know, tied to that misery forever or anything like that, because no matter what you're feeling, it does pass. That would be the number one thing I would tell anybody is when you're going through it in the moment, it seems like it's never going to pass. Whatever, you know, whatever the feeling is, it seems like, oh my golly, you know, I'm going to feel this way forever. This is horrible, and I hate this. It does pass. So I guess it is very easy to pretend everything is okay and really not want to acknowledge or go through the work that you need to go through to move forward. I guess in some cases, your ego can get in the way of this. Yeah, your ego can get into in the way, and and also, you know, the advice of very well-meaning people sometimes gets in the way. You know, you you have very well-meaning people in your life that will tell you things like, "Oh, well, she was never the right person for you," or how you know really to take your side. But what you really want more than anything, at least this is this is my opinion is you just want people in your life that are there with you. You want people in your life that are just going to love you, who are just going to support you, and who are going to, you know, just kind of walk with you as you move through whatever you have to move through. You know, you don't need them to beat the other person up in your mind or make them wrong or anything like that. 
you just need somebody that cares, somebody that will just, as I say, support you and be there for you. And do you think men find that support network difficult to find? Men typically aren't very good at revealing what's going on in the, you know, in the, the inner domain of their world. And so that's what makes it, you know, we men are taught that it's okay to show anger, it's okay to show upset, but the other things, eh, not so much. And so there's a whole range of emotions and thoughts and, you know, things going on in your inner world. And, you know, there are a whole lot more than just anger. You know, there's hurt, there's upset, there's disappointment, there's doubt, there's fear. And, you know, I could go on and on and they all come up. And, you know, if for a man, you know, the biggest thing is, is just not to, to allow all of those influences to make him think that this is forever. And, you know, even if it was maybe a bad decision, you know, what I would tell men, especially uh, women too, but I would tell men this is learn from this experience and when you're going through it, you know, in the, in the moment, you know, because there's there's different stages or different phases, you know, there are times when it's so tough and it's so painful that you just want to get through the day. And then as that starts to pass a little bit, then you start to if you're open to it, you can start to see a little perspective. And hopefully that perspective isn't just making the other person wrong or making them be the, you know, the, the bad person, even if there were things about, you know, their behavior or the way they were that you'd rather have not had to go through. Hopefully that answered your question. So I think it's very important that both men and women, but I think women can do this process a little bit easier, that they can talk through what went wrong, what they could have done right. And men probably find it a little bit harder to do that because, one, they don't have a support system because, you know, women have their girlfriends that they can talk to this with. And men, you know, maybe it's harder for them to acknowledge that they were at fault in the relationship. But I guess what you're saying, Otto, is that if they do sit back and they do look at the relationship from an outsider's perspective or someone that or look at the relationship not from a biased point of view, that they can sit down and work out what did go wrong, what did they do that they could have done better. And that will help them in the future, won't it, for future relationships? Well, one of the things that I would encourage men and women to do, but especially men, is not to get caught in the trap of blame. Because it's so easy to start to want to make yourself right and the other person wrong. But when you start getting caught in that trap of blaming the other person and making them wrong and continuing to fuel that, that blame and that anger and so forth, of course, you know, you, you want to know that if you were the one that left, that that was justified. And if you were the one that was left, because there's always one person that wants to stay in the relationship more than the other one. There's always, there's always one person. So no matter which way it is, if you're a man, then it will not serve you at all to play the blame game because that will only keep you stuck in anger, in hostility, in judgment, in righteousness and wanting to prove them wrong, instead of coming out the other side from this place of, okay, this didn't work. You know, something about this didn't work. And what can I learn from this? That, that's what happened in my own situation. You know, when I was uh, married to someone else before my wife Susie and I got together, at the time, you know, we're, we're talking here, Barbara, my wife Susie and I, this is year 19 for us, going on year 20. 
And I was married to somebody else for 15 years before Susie and I got together. And as that marriage broke up, you know, one of the things that I really had to get to is I had to get to this place. I mean, for the sake of my own healing, I had to get to this place of not wanting to make her wrong, not wanting to make her own, you know, what I call her part in the relationship dance. And once I stopped doing those kind of things, then the healing started to happen. Otto, how did you know the healing was happening? Well, first of all, you're smiling more, you're laughing more, you're wanting more from life. Rather than wanting to go to your home or your apartment and just be miserable, you want to do something. And just the fact that, you know, you're smiling again, even once a day, you can just tune into, oh, well, I'm not as miserable as I was. You know, noticing that when somebody at work might tell a joke or might uh, be talking to you, that, you know, you're more present in a conversation than you maybe would have a little bit earlier or a little bit sooner after the breakup. So just starting to notice, and that's the thing, is the noticing. And to be aware that, oh, yeah, I'm noticing that last week when my friend Jim was uh, talking to me that it, I had a hard time paying attention to him, and today it was easier. Something as simple as that. Or something as simple as, you know, I wanted to go out to a restaurant tonight, whereas a week ago I didn't want to go. Something as simple as when, you know, my friends invited me to go to a get together that it felt like more like something that I could do instead of something for me to turn away from. Big key that knowing if you're healing is just noticing, starting to notice what's different, starting to notice what's different. I guess with your business, the business you and Susie operate, which help people get through their breakups and then you also help them with relationship building. Are you finding that more men are coming to people like yourselves to help them get through their breakup and to get advice and to help guide them through the next relationship? It's been my experience that most people come to people like us when the wheels have sort of fallen off the bus and they are desperate for help. Most people do not seek help about relationship challenges until things have gotten really bad. And so, you know, sometimes people were, are in this place of misery and pain and they want some guidance and helping to move through that. And then it's like phases, you know, they want help finding a new partner. They want help dealing with jealousy issues. They want help in communication, different things. But usually people only want help when there's a crisis. And so it's really our job to let people know that there's so much more available in relationship. You can have so much more love, so much more connection. It's just so much more if you really focus on how can you create more all the time, not just, oh, I think I need a crisis fixed. And so that's what we find is that our real work is to educate people about how by just doing the little things and by working on yourself, working on your relationship, and not that it has to be work, but by focusing on simple questions like, Things are going well, and how can I make them better? It makes a huge difference because most people don't think about how they can make something better unless you know they're in this crisis point like I was just talking about. Otto, do you find that if you have a breakup and you're <laughs> over 50, it's harder to get through the breakup and feel happy again? I don't think it matters how old you are. 
but it's how much you attach to the stories you tell yourself about where you are in life. So if somebody were to say to me, Otto, I'm over 50 now. And there's no way that I'm going to find someone else, or there's no way I'm going to heal from this, that I'm going to be stuck with this feeling forever. Well, if you have that thought and you believe that thought and you really start entrenching yourself and attaching to that belief and that story that you've just told yourself, oh yeah, it's going to be really hard. But if you attach yourself to another possibility, which is, you know, if you even tweak that story even slightly that I'm in a lot of pain right now and I know this is going to end and I know that there's a brighter future for me. We all have different thoughts all the time and the ones that we attach to and the ones that we believe are the ones that determine our future. And so In the course of a moment or or in the course of one minute or an hour or a day, we have all kinds of different thoughts. And some of these thoughts that we have are ones that if we believe them and we buy into them and they are ones that would make us miserable. And so you have to really be aware that, okay, that's not a thought that I want to put any energy into. And so you just, it's like looking at it and saying, oh, then I'd rather tell myself a different story than the one I'm telling myself right now. But the key is being aware that you're telling yourself a certain story about how things are and how things are going to be forever. I mean, people have that story about being over 50 is, oh, I'm over 50 and I'm over the hill. I I don't know how it is in other countries, but here in the U.S., It's kind of a joke that, you know, once you hit 50 or once you hit 60 or sometimes even when you hit, you know, the big 3-0 or 4-0 that, you know, you're over the hill. There are, there are actually birthday cards that people will send their, their friends, you know, and family members, you know, you're over the hill now, admit it. It's nonsense. You're over the hill when you believe you're over the hill. And as far as your possibilities for love and connection and a great relationship, you're over the hill when you believe it. Very well said, Otto. Thank you. (laughs) If people want to find out more about what you and Susie offer, where can they find this information? Yeah, the best thing for somebody to do if they want to find out more about what we're up to, we have a lot of free information on our website, which is at suzyandotto.com. That's S-U-S-I-E-A-N-D-O-T-T-O.com, suzyandotto.com, or they can just Google Suzy and Otto Collins, and, or just Google my name, Otto Collins, and we certainly come up. Thank you, Otto, for coming back on to Break Up Recovery podcast and sharing your thoughts and giving us the male perspective. And I think everything you said made sense, especially about pretending that you are okay and having to acknowledge what your part was in the breakup and not to mask your pain and to learn from your experiences. And also the big one that you were talking about, the blame game, It's so important for people to take these ideas and insights on board if they want to move forward after their breakup. So thank you once again, Otto, for sharing in today's episode. You're certainly welcome. Glad I could do it. Glad I could be here. And thank you, Barbara, for everything you're doing in the world. I love it. Thank you. If you would like to hear previous Breakup Recovery podcasts, visit barbastevens.com.au. Connect with Barbara Stevens on social media with Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor on Facebook and at You'll Be Okay on Twitter. Read further blogs, view webinar replays, and download your free ebook, Three Easy Steps to Surviving Your Breakup, and much more at barbastevens.com.au.